Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 121 responsively. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 4. What are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for our gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and fast love. Dear friends, this is the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet do not understand these things? 
Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify that w to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Beloved and dear friends, grace and peace to you from the Lord who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. If you have any doubt that the Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, hear the gospel assigned for this Sunday. Because Jesus said it himself, judgment and condemnation is just not what he's about. Jesus is about saving, and Jesus came to save. That could be the end of the story. That could be all the people of God need to know. That could be the heart of everything that we read in this book that shows us a heart that is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. But I assume since it's Sunday morning and you're all in church that you'd like to hear a little bit more. <laughs> but you don't have to really listen to anything else if you've heard that part. Jesus, the Son of Man, came to save. That's why God sent him into the world to be born, to live in the world, to save the world. Hear the words of Jesus. He did not come into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. That's truly too good. That's truly too easy for us. You know, in the world that we live, when something is too good to be true, we say that it probably is too good to be true. But Jesus isn't of this world. He came to the world, though, to reveal the true heart of God, who is determined to save. And this is both good and true. Perhaps a question worth asking ourselves is, what difference does this good truth make? What does this good truth mean for us? I suggest that it makes every difference in the world. Every difference in the world. Because ultimately, this truth and this good truth is the difference between fear and love. And ultimately, this truth is the difference between death and life. What if you were able to live your life without being afraid of God's condemnation? This loving, forgiving, gracious, and saving God revealed God's self to us and to all the world in one primary being, Jesus Christ. Indeed, 
God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. When I hear this, John's gospel echoes some of the other gospels in this proclamation that Jesus came to save. Recall the birth announcement of the angels from Luke's gospel. Do not be afraid, the angel said, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you, born this day in the city of David, is a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus came to save. He said it. The angels said it. He came into the world to save. There is an old Christmas story from radio host Paul Harvey. Some of you probably remember him. The story demonstrates what the gospel proclaims. Harvey told the story of a man who stayed home from church Christmas Eve while the rest of his family drove to the service. I'm going to share his words directly, but I won't share it with his voice because I can't quite get that. Um, he, he had that way of sounding excited and, and fun and, you know, now for the news, these kind of bouncy language. I'll just read his words in my voice. Here's what he's told. Now, shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow flurries began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier. And then he went back to his fireside chair and began to read. Minutes later, the man was startled by a thudding sound. And then another. And then another. The, at first he thought that somebody must be throwing snowballs against the living room window. But when he went to look and investigate, he found that a flock of birds had, had gathered outside, had been caught in the storm. They were desperate, and they searched for shelter, so they tried to break through the window. And that was what had been making the thudding sound he heard. Well, he couldn't just let those poor creatures just lie there and freeze. So he remembered the barn where his children stored their pony. That would provide a warm shelter. All he would have to do is direct the birds into the shelter. Quickly, he put on a coat and galoshes, and he trampled through the deepening snow to the barn, and he opened the doors wide. And inside the barn, he turned a light on so the birds would know the way in. But the birds did not come in. So he figured that maybe food would entice them. He went back into his house. He fetched breadcrumbs and sprinkled those out on the snow, making a trail of those crumbs, of course, to the yellow-lighted open doorway to the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs altogether. They just continued to flop around helplessly in the snow. He tried to catch them, but he could not. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around them and waving his arms and trying to point them in the direction to shoo them into barns, but Instead, the birds just went off in every direction, every direction except into that warm, lighted barn. And that's when he realized that the birds were all afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I'm a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me 
that I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. Any move that he made tended to frighten the birds and confuse them. They just would not follow. They would not be led or shooed because they feared him. And he thought to himself, if only I could be a bird. I could be a bird and mingle with them and speak their language and tell them not to be afraid. And then I could show them the way to the safe, warm barn. But I would have to be one of them, wouldn't I? So they could see and hear and understand. Paul Harvey ended the story describing how at that very moment the man heard the church bells ringing and tolling on Christmas Eve. Bells announcing to all that a Savior had been born, who is Christ the Lord. What if I could mingle with them and speak to them and tell them not to be afraid? Yeah, what if that happened? <laughs>